We're at FutureNet World 2025 in London. I'm here with Thomas Van Briel. He is Chief Network Architect at Deutsche Telekom. Thomas, thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here with you. Good to see you. Um, so uh, this event, it's really all about, uh, or mostly about uh, AI, APIs, network automation. Um, how would you describe Deutsche Telekom's AI strategy as it relates particularly to network operations? We strive for autonomous networks, as do other operators as well. And we see that uh, the combination of all the good traits of putting the right foundation and then putting AI on top is really uh, a match made in heaven. So we see a lot of potential uh, to apply it across our operation. Uh, let me just point out two aspects. So uh, we go very much for a value-driven approach. So looking very structured across all our value chains and seeing where's the biggest value to be had in which network domains or which part and basically it's the operations where we have the biggest leverage. That's one aspect. Uh, the other aspect is that we then bring together also um, um, uh, sh the shift from the classical ML ops or also getting better accessibility to our data, whether Gen and I now to Agentic AI and really build the power to build agents uh, to substitute human processes. And we try to do that as quickly as possible across the board and uh, instill the right skills into the organization to go for that. And that's actually something that you're not just talking about, but you're, yes. you're actually you do. doing, yes, aren't you, yeah. in the mobile network with, the, um, with Run, Google? Yes, right, exactly. yes, okay. And how is that uh, progressing? What, what, what are you seeing as a result of the deployment of that particular tool? Is that living up to expectations? Yes, of course we are learning. Uh, we are seeing that we, we really have good results. I won't go into KPIs that I uh, share right now, but it's something uh, that's uh, really working. Yeah, the um, difficult thing is really how to put it into operation so that it, you can keep it properly in the life cycle that's coexisting with all the other processes that are going on. So that's where we are uh, still learning a lot. But we see that if you go for clearly defined business problems that are sufficiently narrow, then it's also manageable to go through the learning curve comparably quickly. Are there any other particular telco AI use cases being tried out in particular parts of the Deutsche Telekom empire, for example, in, in certain European operations where you're trying it in one country first or even part of a country to kind of prove it in and see how it works before rolling it out in, in other markets? That, that is a very usual pattern that we have. Uh, we have communicated also at uh, the last Capital Markets Day um, last year that uh, we strive for higher synergies across the footprint and that's one of the basic patterns that we apply. If it's of interest, um, you ask what is then something else that uh, we look into where we see a big value. It's definitely in fiber rollout where we see that uh, we have made good progress to really bring the data together across all parts of uh, the operations where we have a good foundation. And then, for example, um, substituting human work to reconcile the actual construction progress uh, taken on uh, with a camera on site with builds being sent by a partner and, and then matching now is the depth of uh, the digging really to what we see on the bill and is the actual progress in line with what we expected and then um, bringing them up out of line situations. These kind of things are accessible to applying agents. So, um, we are going for these kind of use cases, just as an example. Now, you mentioned um, uh, the data there, and obviously yeah. the data foundations are absolutely yeah. key here. Uh, what, what is Deutsche Telekom's um, strategy around uh, data management and how you're collecting and using this data? And what needs to be put in place before AI can have a, a real impact on operational efficiency? Okay, uh, two parts of an answer here. Um, we experience in practice uh, the most specific the use case is that you go for it, the easier it is uh, to make sure that you have the prerequisites. And uh, I would not subscribe to a statement that says we only can uh, uh, leverage uh, the power of AI if everything in terms of data is right there. Okay. So Having said that, going for broader use cases to more powerful use cases requires that you really get your act together on data 
and we uh, really try to apply industry practices that are not even uh, uh, limited to telco. Yeah, with the right data management, data governance, uh, uh, having discoverability of the data in place uh, with a defined quality so that uh, as a consumer, you have an easy task and as a uh, um, producer of data, you take on the accountability to make sure that that is available for any type of use case uh, that needs to be there. So that is, uh, in my expectation, anything from special. Bringing an organization across the board to that level is a challenge uh, that we are working on. Okay. Um, and then, obviously, as this progresses and the, and the use of AI becomes more prevalent in the telecom sector, there's a lot of talk about certain levels of efficiency or, or um, uh, advances that can be made, but how can you measure that? How can you know the impact that uh, the use of AI tools is having? Is, is that something that, is there an industry standard for this or is Deutsch, does Deutsche Telekom have its own way of measuring the impact of yeah. AI? Um. First statement on a specific use case. You better know what you're striving for. And you can. If you, for example, go to the RAN Guardian agent, we can very clearly say before with that many people, we were able to specifically cater to that many events. Afterwards, we can uh, increase that uh, by a factor 10 or a factor 100 in terms of taking action for specific uh, events that happen in the network. And you can count that and, and measure that. You can also then reconcile what is the actual impact on customer experience. Do we see that the average experience that the user had in these events has improved? So that is possible, but you do it per use case to really optimize it going forward. And that's also a local responsibility of the DevOps team that take care of the specific use case. Second, uh, um, uh, direction on looking at the question that you are asking is how do you identify where the value is and what you should go after. Uh, so uh, we uh, follow a very pragmatic approach where we basically build a metrics uh, across uh, the whole value chain, across all the network domains, allocate our spend, our FTEs, and then identify with uh, expert knowledge uh, um, what are the high value fields that we should go after and describe for those what is the goal that we want to reach. So that's answering the question, how do we identify what we really should do? Okay, I'm, I was just wondering if, if this is something at the moment that, for example, the way you measure and the way you model that, is that something that you've developed in-house that's maybe different from uh, other telcos or is there a kind of, you know, okay, yeah, almost okay, like yeah, an agreement? We have uh, looked very closely at uh, what uh, TM Forum is doing, what also uh, key players on there are doing, like China Mova, something like that, and um, have done some things that are similar, and then some things uh, we deviate uh, uh, a little. We see that it is quite challenging to come up with repeatable, accurate, uh, um, industry frameworks to measure progress in terms of autonomy grades or something like that. It is doable, but it is very, very tedious work. And the, as an industry as a whole, we are still very much in the beginning as far as this is concerned. So we tend to be very pragmatic and ra rather solve for how do we make sure that the use cases that we're striving for actually deliver the value and uh, being able to identify it. We very closely uh, um, um, watch what's going on there and uh, adopt more advanced practices as they become mature. And I think the approaches that we have are very much uh, compatible. Yeah, because I guess the thing that everybody wants to avoid is just using AI because it looks like you should or because it's exciting, but then you need to have a tangible gain, don't you, at the end of the day, so, okay. Definitely a work in progress. I can feel that, sense that from the conversations here at the event, a work in progress, but at least things are happening now in the sector and things are changing. So, Thomas, great to talk to you. Thanks very much for taking the time and look forward to speaking to you again in the future. It was a pleasure. Thank you.